This is a video where I make my dog appear out of a picture and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. So this is the whole effect in 15 seconds. I take a picture of my dog, place it down, and he appears in real life and steps through it. It looks a little bit complex, but I guarantee you that if you have a little bit of patience and After Effects, you can pull off the same effect. So let's start with the first step. First thing you need to do is actually record your footage. And the first thing that you need to film is nothing. I mean, not like not filming, filming an empty frame. We call this a clean plate, and this is gonna be really helpful to us later on when we need to make our subject invisible. So once you've got a nice clean plate recorded, don't touch the camera, but just get into position and go through the motion of the shot. For me, that's pulling a picture frame over my dog. It looks especially nice if you can hold it in front first to get a nice headshot kind of a look. Then pull it over and let your subject step all the way through. Pretty simple, as long as your picture frame is actually big enough to fit over top of your subject. And pro tip, it makes things a lot easier if you can actually communicate with your subject using words. Sit. Sit. Once you've gone through everything, exit the frame and keep the camera rolling to capture another clean plate. Why? Well, literally just because it might work better than the other one you did. You probably won't need both of them, but it's just nice to have another option in case something unexpected happens, like something pops into your frame that you weren't anticipating. It's just nice to have more options at the ready so that you don't get into the editing room and realize, ah, I need to go back and reshoot the entire thing. So now we can actually jump into After Effects and start building out this effect. First step is let's take our footage here and create a new composition based on the parameters of our clip. Nice. Now let's find the portions of our clip that we wanna keep. So here's the start and here's the end. And to cut off those portions at the beginning and end, just place your playhead over top of them and hit Control or Command Shift D. So now that we've cut out this section, I'll delete the first bit here and let's drag this main section back. And then I'm gonna take the second portion here and look for where the clean plate starts to begin, which for me is right here. So I'm gonna place it below my original clip and have it present throughout the duration of the shot. Now let's clean things up a little bit by setting an out point at the end of our project. You can do this by hitting the end key where the playhead is over top. For me, I'm gonna be putting this on social media, so I wanna create a 15 second long clip. So I'll set the out point here for about 15 seconds. Hit the end key, then I can right click here on this section and select trim comp to work area. And boom, that's our entire project length. Now it looks nice and classy. Next up, we're just gonna duplicate this main composition here and we're gonna label these to help us get organized and prepare well for our next steps. You can either right click and rename or just highlight the layer you wanna rename and click enter. So I'll rename this top layer still frame, the second layer main footage, and the bottom layer clean plate. Nice and organized. Okay, so now let's move forward and decide at what point we want our picture to actually change from fake to real. For me, that's right here. I'm actually choosing a point where the still frame looks the nicest in my opinion. Like it could be a standalone nicely composed photo. Great, so now let's take this top still frame layer, right click and select freeze frame. And here we should see that our scene freezes. Now here's where the magic starts to happen. We can take our pen tool and just cut out the inside of the frame. Once you do that, you shouldn't really notice any difference yet except that it's hovering over this spot here and just looks kind of awkward. So let's drag the end of the clip here so that it stops exactly where we want it to transition into real life. So now we got something that looks a little like this. We're getting there. You can sort of see where we're going, but now we have to actually create the tracking so that this frame matches the frame of the picture throughout our entire shot. So to do that, let's just quickly hide this still frame layer here. And while we're at it, let's clean this up a little bit by pre-composing the still frame layer. Right click and pre-compose and move all attributes to the new composition. You should see that this new composition lasts the entire duration of our project here, but because the clip that's nested inside stops early, your still frame will actually still disappear at the correct moment. So now let's highlight our main footage layer and go to our tracker. If you can't find it, just go to window, tracker. And here we're gonna choose the track motion option. Now under this drop down here, select perspective corner pin. And now we should see four tracking boxes appear. Start by moving your playhead to the exact position where your freeze frame was taken. If you're having trouble finding it, you can go back to your main composition tab here 
and find the exact point where that is. Go back to the layer tab here and we can keep going with our tracking. Now this will likely be the most time consuming part of the process for you as what you need to do is line up all of these corners as exactly close as possible with the corners of the frame. Just getting a tiny little bit of overlap so when the final still frame is matched over top, you don't see any empty space on the edges. Better to cut off a little bit of the edge of the frame rather than having it floating in the middle. Now this process is slightly different from traditional screen tracking. After Effects and Mocha are both really good at tracking shapes, clearly defined objects, but what we're tracking is actually empty space technically. So because this will be more challenging for After Effects, what I would suggest to do is to increase the size of these corner trackers here so that you capture the full corner, but that the center here is directly over the portion that you want, nestled right into the corner. Once you have all four corners lined up, go up to the tracking icons here, and instead of tracking forwards, we're actually gonna be tracking backwards. Now I'd suggest actually tracking backward only one frame at a time, making sure that each step along the way, your track on each of the four corners is in exactly the right position. What will really help you in this case is to film against a background that contrasts your frame. So I have a dark frame, so I shot against a bright background. If you had a white frame, then shooting against a blown out sky is going to make the track much more difficult. So if you have a light frame, then your goal is to film against a darker background. Make sense? Okay, so now let's go through the process of tracking backward one frame at a time and checking to ensure that it tracks correctly. If you notice that it doesn't, adjust and move backward and then continue moving backward another frame. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so once we're done, this is what it looks like. Not bad. So now we have to tell this information to track our still frame onto those corners. Thankfully, this is really easy, but we do need to do one or two extra steps. First, let's just make sure that our target is actually the still frame layer. And once we hit apply, we should get something like this. You'll notice that there's a problem. The still picture is actually much smaller than the frame that we're holding, but why? Well, it's because the tracker is literally taking the whole frame from each corner and squashing it into this region here. But we're not starting with a full frame, we're starting with only a partial cutout of a frame. So let's undo and now let's prepare our still frame to be used properly. First thing we need to do is stretch out our image as much as possible. So let's solo this layer, hit S for scale and uncheck uniform scale. Now we can increase the width and the height independently until we get as close to our frame size as possible. And we can even click and drag the image around here to get it more centered. But because the image is skewed a little bit, we won't be able to get it perfect. So let's pre-compose this layer again, move all attributes to the new composition, and then let's add an effect called corner pin. Here we can take the corners and manually stretch them out to match the edge of the frame, getting as close as we can to making it perfectly match. There we go. Now let's just pre-compose this one more time, moving all attributes to the new composition. Okay, so now I know that this looks gross, but it's gonna work really well. Let me show you. Let's go back to our tracker by highlighting our main footage and then selecting our motion tracker again. And we can click on the tracker here in the dropdown and get back all of that work that we did before. Now your track type might have switched during this process to something called raw. So switch it back to perspective corner pin and let's double check that our target is still the still frame. Once we've confirmed that, we can hit apply and now we get the look that we're going for. Awesome. This is really great, but all we have at the moment is the picture covering up our subject, which is still visible the entire time and then switching to the real thing. What we need to do is hide our subject the entire time the frame isn't over top of them. So this is where the clean plate comes in. On your main footage layer, create a mask around your subject and set it to subtract. And feather it until it looks natural. Don't feather too much, otherwise it'll be impossible for it not to cut into the mask. Now let's move forwards to the first frame before where your picture starts to appear over top of that mask and set a keyframe for mask path. Continue frame by frame, adjusting the mask around the edge of your picture frame so that it covers up your subject, but not the frame. What can help a lot with this process is instead of rotoscoping every single frame, try every two, three, or even five frames at a time to get the general motion and your mask path keyframe might actually automatically fill in the gaps properly. 
and if not, you can go back to those specific frames and make adjustments. This can save you a lot of time. And another thing that can help is if you have multiple sections that you need to erase, like for example, I have below the frame and then on the right hand side, having multiple simple masks can be easier to adjust than one very complex mask. Just make sure that if you're using multiple masks, all of them are set to subtract. Great, now this is where you should be at. Looking good, but there's still two steps that you can add for some extra polish. The first thing is we can add a little bit of a glossy layer over top of the photo frame. Dive into your still frame composition and add a new solid layer over top of it and make sure that it's white. Then create a simple mask in the shape of a basic rectangle and I like it going from corner to corner. Make sure that you feather the mask a lot and that the opacity is pretty low, like 25% or less. And then keyframe the opacity to drop to zero by the time you switch to the real footage. Otherwise, your transition will become very obvious. And finally, one of the easiest ways to help solve your effect is to add a little bit of a subtle camera shake. The reason is, is because having your camera perfectly locked off on a tripod makes your work in editing so much easier. But what it also does is it lets the audience know that this was set up prepared in advance. And so having a little bit of that natural looking camera shake helps to make it seem like this wasn't exactly planned out ahead of time, making it feel more organic and more real. So I'm gonna bring in my After Effects composition into Premiere Pro and add a simple camera shake preset here that I got from Motion Array. You can also just use a wiggle expression in After Effects. We have a couple tutorials on how to do exactly that, but for me, I'm actually gonna be preparing the rest of this video inside of Premiere Pro because I'm actually gonna be exporting it as a vertical video to go on social media. So I'm already doing things like adding keyframes to move over from one area to the other. So this was just easier for me personally. But the other benefit to a preset is that it gets you that really natural camera shake look without spending a lot of time trying to dial it in yourself. It comes pre-packaged with different options so that you can pick the one that's closest to what you like specifically. And if you really did have that techie vibe to you, you can dive in into effect controls and toy with all the different parameters to make it exactly how you want it to look. So just pop on the camera shake and there you go. This is our final effect. And guys, I really hope that you found this effect interesting and that you found the tutorial helpful. This effect incorporates a couple different skills inside of After Effects. So even if you're never actually pulling off this exact effect, I hope that this tutorial can help you to pull off some of the skills that you'll need in other areas of your After Effects career. And if you wanted to take a look at the camera shake that I used in this tutorial, I'll leave a link to that, as well as a link to our tutorials on how to create a wiggle expression inside of After Effects. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.